Now, please. Sir, I am grateful, sir, that you have given me the opportunity at this August House to move the constitutional amendment, sir. Sir, why this amendment? It is not in hurry at all. It is the culmination of the effort of the last 20 years. I want to make it very clear. Sir, as we all know, that under Article 124, there is a provision for appointment of judges of Supreme Court. Article 217, there is a provision for appointment of judges of High Court. And the Constitution invites very clearly and categorically that the President shall appoint in consultation with the Chief Justice of India and other judges as he considers appropriate. And in case of High Court, the Chief Justice of the High Court. From 26th of January 1950, the same procedure continued till 1993. There was SP Gupta judgment in between in 80s where the Supreme Court said that consultation means, does not mean concurrence and the executive primacy is there. In 1993, the Supreme Court came with a collegium judgment where they said, no, we shall appoint in consultation with the government. That is the sum and substance of that judgment. They said the Chief Justice in consultation with two judges, then the government again sought a reference under Article 143, then came the second judge's case. In the second judge's case, they said, sir, that instead of two, we will have five, four judges in the collegium, head by the Chief Justice, we shall recommend in case of High Court, apart from Chief, there shall be two judges. So the government's role was quite reduced. The government only right was to seek a reconsideration. And if the collegium retraced the previous view, the government has no right whatsoever. In effect, the Supreme Court rewrote the Constitution. That was never the intention. Sir, in some time in my reply, I will elaborately explain, sir. Dr. Ambedkar, in 1950, in a debate in the Constitution formation, sir, rightly said, there shall be no unbridled power to the president. There shall be no unbridled power to the legislature. And there shall be no unbridled power also to the chief justice. The chief justice as a human being has also the same failing as others. Hence, the consultation mechanism came about. Now, sir, this whole rewriting of the constitution and the resultant collegium system has gone for 20 years. But, sir, is the government today making the only effort? No. Let me just tell very quickly, sir, and very briefly, sir, that the past effort, the Constitution 67th Amendment Bill 1990, sir, the bill lapsed. Then Constitutional 82nd Amendment Bill 1997, the bill also uh, could not be passed, sir. National Judicial Commission 1998, sir. Thereafter, sir, there was the Constitutional 99th Amendment Bill 2003, sir, when Mr. Arun Jaitley, the present leader of the House, was the Honorable Law Minister. National Commission to review the working of Constitution 2003, to Second Administrative Reform Commission 2007, and, sir, many other efforts were made in Law Commission report. I'll reply to that. In 2013, when the previous government was there, they brought a bill. And Satish Mishraji is very right. They came with a single line amendment in the constitution. Then a view was taken. You have the architecture in the constitution itself. The standing committee also had said that. They brought the amendment in that house. The house lapsed. Sir, after the government came to power, sir, I want to just convey to this house, I held two level of consultations. One, we called a meeting of all the eminent jurists known in the country, sir, from Fali Nariman to Mr. Parasaran to Venugopalji to Shanti Bhushan, Vanil Divan to Mr. Tulsi, also a member is there. He was present there. I took the views of many attorney general. Sri Arun Jaitley, as an eminent lawyer, was there. Two former chief justices were there, Sri Vian Khare and Sri Ahmdi. Many chief justices wrote to me that though we are not able to come, but we are fully supportive of it. Sri P.P. Rao, Sri Asok Desai, all wrote to me they could not come, that they are fully supportive of it. So this was the first level of consultation at the jurist level. Second, sir, the government wrote to 26 political parties. I personally wrote as a law minister, including Simati Sonia Gandhi, to Mulayam Singh Yadav, to Shri Prakash Karat, to Shri Sudhakar Reddy, to Shri Sharad Yadav, to everyone. 
And sir, I want to tell you, sir, that I received the letter from Sri Ram Gopal Yadav conveying the approval. I received the letter from Mayavati ji completely approving the proposal for National Judicial Commission. I received from Sri Prakash Karat, from Sri Sudhakar Reddy, from Sri Arvind Kejriwal, from Mamta ji supporting it, uh, Honorable the Chief Minister of then I received the letter from Honorable Jayalita Ji, the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, making certain suggestions, but in principle agreeing for replacement of the collegium system. Sir, even the Congress party, sir, conveyed to me that the party is in principle supportive of this bill to replace the collegium system, and obviously they had moved the bill earlier. Huh? All right, I'm, 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 I'm coming to that. Now, sir, therefore, the government has had the widest consultation possible and just to allay the apprehension that something has been done in a hurry, no, it is going for the last 20 years. Venkat Chalayaji, former Chief Justice of the Constitutional Review Commission, also recommended that. He had the widest consultation. The Law Commission had the widest consultation. Many other political process also gave their feedback. Therefore, it is nothing new. Pichle 20 saal se ye kaam chal raha hai, lekin kai karno se ye bill nahi ban saka. This government, therefore, has taken cognizance of this 20 years of effort and also the view of the, apart from eminent jurists, other political leaders of all the political parties who have in principle stated that. <coughs> Sir, Sri Yachuri is right that he had, his, his party had suggested make it in a brigal one. That is a larger issue of National Judicial Accountability Bill. But the government took a conscious decision that first the existing structure has to be changed. We are equally committed to that aspect of yours, which will come that separately after consultation. But the first and foremost issue is to replace the existing system for which they have come with an amendment. Sir, what is this architecture, sir? Architecture is that the National Judicial Commission shall be headed by the Chief Justice of India. Two senior most judges of the Supreme Court shall be the member. Law Minister of India shall be the member. Two eminent persons to be appointed by the Prime Minister, the Chief Justice of India and the leader of opposition in the Lok Sabha or leader of the largest political party shall sit together and select two eminent persons, the highest level of authorities to appoint that. One of them shall be either a woman or an SCST or a minority or an OBC. Sir, I must clarify, in their case it was by rotation. Why we have removed that, sir, the, number, the reason is very simple, sir. If you go by rotation, the number may come of 12 years. Suppose, sir, there is a good eminent woman from the minority community. There is a good eminent woman from the SC community available. Two can be taken into account. Suppose the Chief Justice of India is a woman, distinguished woman. Suppose the Law Minister in India is a distinguished person. Therefore, if the flexibility is not given, maybe the purpose to ensure diversity would not have been possible. Therefore, we have given that. Sir, today I have to appeal to this House. I will come to the bill part separately, sir. We have, walked, we have very consciously, the government is a firmly of the view that the government has got the full legislative competence. As I said earlier, the right of the government to bring the bill is not conditioned upon the passage of this amendment. That summary exclusive right wrote from Article 246, read with List 1, entry 77 and 78, where the Parliament can pass any law any day with regard to the Supreme Court of India or any High Court of India. Therefore, it is not conditional upon. And as far as this amendment is concerned, it is only an enabling one where the entire architecture of the Commission is coming into being as a part of the Constitution. Sir, what is my last appeal? My last appeal relevant. to this House is that for 20 years this bill could not be passed. 24 years. Honorable Arun Jitli is right. Is it not the time that the Parliament must realize that if there is a serious misgivings that collegium system has not worked well? Yes, there are issues. Why not? I always say, and let me categorically say, sir, our government is firmly committed to the independence of judiciary. Our government is firmly committed to the entire institutional integrity of judiciary. And today, sir, I wish to say very clearly and categorically 
that we have fought for the independence of judiciary during emergency and the JP movement for individual freedom. And I'm very proud to say, led by the Prime Minister, many distinguished members of this government are those who have fought for the sanctity and independence of judiciary. Sri Arun Jaitley, Sri Venkaiya Naidu, many are sitting here, me included at a small level worker like that. Therefore, I, I really appreciate that. And sir, Sharad Yadavji, you are very right. Our commitment to independence of judiciary is total and complete. That is one thing, sir. We are not bringing any hurry at all. And thirdly, sir, our government fully respects the total jurisdiction, the constitutional right, and the duty of the judiciary. There is not even the slightest hint to interfere in that. But one thing I would like to highlight, sir, and I would like to hear the views of my distinguished friends. The right of appointment is an executive act. The right of transfer is an executive act. And the government has no intention at all to interfere, impede, transgress into the judicial right obligation of the institution of judiciary, which we all hold in highest respect. Therefore, what is my conclusion today? Let the entire house say in one voice. Let the entire house invoke the collective consciousness of India's polity as reflected in this house today, that this house is speaking in one voice. The National Judicial Commission must come into existence. The collegium system must cease to exist. And that voice must go. And it is that ap appeal I'm making to this house to kindly ensure that this amendment is passed. That's all, sir.